murder, mayhem, death, destruction, worse schools. They control every whole house. Haven't you done enough to my people? Haven't you killed enough of them? Haven't you put enough of them in prison, destroyed enough of their families? I hold you in utter contempt. That's actually true. The left would tell the black community that we have that power. Vito told Jinko the truth. I have no such power. But when the black community goes to the left and they ask them, can you feed me? Can you clothe me? Can you educate my children? Can you make me like you? Can you make me equal to you? They say, yes, we can do it if you just give us your soul. And for 50, 60 years, we've fallen for that lie. And with the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in the United States of America. That's facts. Bro, that is so true, man. Our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, he was a country lawyer. He's talking to the jury, and he asked him a question. He said, if he had a dog, and you counted his tail as a leg, how many legs would the dog have? The jury said, five. He said, no. Still be four, because the tail is still the tail. Because you call it a leg, doesn't make it a leg. It is still a tail. This is kind of what we're talking about here tonight. Just because you call something something doesn't mean that that's what it is. We've gone into a level of abject insanity here in America, and it's got to be dealt with. Man, I was walking through the city today just enjoying the weather and enjoying the people. And I saw this mural on the side of the parking garage. It caught my attention. And it said, weaponize your privilege to, slay, to save black bodies. You got weaponize your privilege to save black bodies. OK. <laughs> I'm assuming that's a reference to white people in America, because every time you hear the phrase weaponize your privilege, it is talking to white people or is talking specifically i guess to white men um i don't i don't even know what that statement means if i'm being honest like really think about it think about it. what can the average white person do to save black bodies like i i'm not trying to nitpick i'm that's a genuine question what does that statement even mean you got a black man on it look like he did and I was seeing some of the students, and I was saying, hey, what, what is that about? And a lot of them didn't know. And then one young lady said, I think it came from the Black Lives Matter protests and things that were going on here. And I said, weaponize your privilege. So who are they talking to? And she said, well, I think they're talking to white people. And I said, they're saying they have some type of privilege over me to save black bodies? I mean, what are they saying? And it dawned on me. I said, the left has a God complex. Black people think that they're inferior and white liberals think that they're God. And black people are praying to white liberals to save their lives. Use, weaponize your privilege to save black bodies. It reminds me of an outtake from The Godfather, which um, he left it in the movie, Francis Ford Coppola. But it's an outtake. Vito Corleone is going to see his um, concierge. Jinko, he's dying. And he brings all of his sons. Jinko's not going to make it through the night. And Jinko's afraid. He's scared to death. He's lying there and he sees Vito come in with his sons. And he says, Godfather, Godfather, uh, save me from death. When death comes in the room, make, make some deals. He's seen Vito do all these great things his whole life, right? And he th thought the Vito was like supernatural. He said, make a deal with death. Pull some springs, strings. Make death go away. And Vito looked at his old friend, seeing how afraid he was. And he looked at him and said, Jinko. I have no such power. Do not fear death. Um, whoever Vince Ellison is, I don't know who this man is, but he is extremely wise. And I don't know all his political beliefs. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about just him as an individual. Because what he said a few moments ago was so true. When you think that white people just have the power to save you, that's a very degenerate, that's a very degenerate thought process. Very degenerate. And I'm not going to talk about the left or the right, but let's just talk about, let's just be, let's just be honest here. People who push that message that one race has to save another race or one group of people has to save another people, they're not for you. They're not helping you. They're not helping me. They're not helping society. Because as a young black man in society, I mean, as a young black man who exists, I've, I've had a lot of challenges in my life. I've had a lot of difficulties. I've had to overcome a lot of things. Um, but never have I sat here and thought that any challenge I face 
was not was due to white people. I never thought any challenge I faced was due to anyone. Life is just hard. Life is just hard, bro. But the fact is, you can't just sit here and blame your problems on other people. These they act like white people just don't have their own problems. Like they don't exist in in the same society. We all live in the same society, bro. I promise you. We all live in the same world, man. So when I when I hear people say like, "Oh, it's the white it's the, it's the white person's fault. Use your privilege to help me." I'm just sitting here I'm like, "What are you even talking about? What are you talking about, bro? It don't even make sense." But anyways, let's continue. And Jico said, "Well, then just stay with me." The left would tell the black community that we have that power. See, Vito told Jinko the truth. I have no such power. But when the black community goes to the left and they ask them, can you feed me, can you clothe me, can you educate my children, can you make me like you, can you make me equal to you, they say, yes, we can do it if you just give us your soul. And for 50, 60 years, we've fallen for that lie. Bro, that is so true, man. And and here's the here's the problem that I have, and this is actually towards um, the the left or the liberal um, uh, perspective. Why do they try to tie the African American's identity with a political party? And what I mean by that is, why is it? Why is me voting a certain way tied to my worth in this culture as a black man? I hate the fact that a political party try to say that you are less this or that you aren't equivalent in your black culture if you vote a certain way. Because look in the mirror, if you're watching me, I am very obviously black. But my thing is, it doesn't matter how I vote. That's why I don't even bring it up in my videos. I don't mention what side I, 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 I sway to. I just give my perspective. However, if you hear some of these leftist talking points, they try to mention your worth as a black man or your 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 uh, your reference to your own culture as an African American man. And my thing is, that's not even your place to decide. It's my place to decide um, how I interpret my culture, not uh, a, a party's uh, not a party's idea of what I should act like. And that's honestly kind of racist, if I'm being honest. Because you have this idea of what a black man should be or a black person should be. And when someone doesn't fit that, you're like, oh, you're not black. Like, come on. And with the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in the United States of America. That's facts. Look That's at facts where they rule. Too. Everywhere they rule. Detroit, Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, Memphis, everywhere they rule. Murder, mayhem, death, destruction, worse schools. They control every whole house. Every crack house, every failing school. Haven't you done enough to my people? Haven't you killed enough of them? Haven't you put enough of them in prison, destroyed enough of their families? I hold you in utter contempt. And then you have the nerve to say you want to expand it. You have no shame. Great movie, Cool Hand Luke. When the woman told Luke he was doing these things to him for his own good. What did Luke tell him? I wish you'd stop being so good to me, boss. Well, I think that's about what the black community is ready to tell the left. I wish y'all stop being so good to us. We want to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion tonight, right? We're dealing with people, y'all. Who, at this present time, do not believe in science. Our Declaration of Independence say that uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident. When you talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, I often get the question, do I personally support that? Um, because I am um, watching this type of content. And what I will say is diversity in terms of thought, the thought process is extremely important. It's extremely important because how you think interprets how you view issues in society. It interprets how you view solutions in society. So if you have a group of people who have different thought processes, then yes, it's important. 
The problem that I see with diversity, equity, and inclusion is that it tries to get diversity of thought in an extremely, I'm just going to say problematic way. And what I mean by that is companies will want diversity of thought and their solution to this is to just get as many black people or Asian people or women on their team that they can possibly get. That doesn't automatically think, I mean, lead to diversity of thought. That doesn't, that's kind of, it's, it's, it's racist. It is just kind of lazy because you can train diversity of thought. You can, you can build up a community with diversity, but with more training in your, in your, um, in your company or organization, but just, just picking people based off of their race or gender that it doesn't make sense. And it's, I don't understand how we even got to this point, if I'm being honest, but let's continue. What is self-evident? That means that I shouldn't have to explain this to you. That's what self-evident means. There are some truths that are self-evident. That's the tree. No, it's not. Man, I ain't even argue with you about that. If you don't have enough sense to know that's the tree, you know. That's the sun. No, it's not. Dude, that's the sun. No, it's not. No, I mean, Thomas Jefferson said some truths are self-evident. That all men are created equal. I have to argue with you about this, okay? Oh, no. Not with the left. No, 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 no. You can tell them the science says a, a man, a woman has excess chromosome. Man, that X, Y. No, they don't. And that's, that's an issue that I personally have with DEI. Because it basically tells you, and you don't want to admit this, then don't admit this. This is what I see. This is my life. I'm in college right now. I'm in a dorm literally right now. I'm graduating with my uh, my undergraduate degree in in a month and a half. I'm getting, I'm becoming an electrical engineer. Um, the problem that I have is that it automatically says you're degenerate, or it it automatically says you're you're worth less. You're automatically. It doesn't matter how smart you are. Doesn't matter how much how hard you work. It doesn't matter what how much your parents make, where you grew up at. None of that matters. It's based off of skin color, right? is based solely off of skin color that you are automatically worthless automatically they they are automatically on a higher playing field than you it don't matter nothing else matters and that's my problem with it because i know in my life that is not true that is not true there are white people who are smarter than me there are asian people who are smarter than me there are um, hispanic people who are smarter there's every race of person who is smarter than me However, there are white people that I'm smarter than, there are Asian people that I'm smarter than, there are Hispanic people that I'm smarter than. All I'm saying is intelligence, um, privilege is not based solely off of skin color. It's, it's not. But anyways. And you just look. It's fluid. Gender is fluid. So I can tell you today that I'm a, a woman, right? Yeah. And I can go to a woman's bathroom. Yes, you can. And then the, tomorrow I can tell you I'm a man. Yeah when he made his horse a consulate. We are living in that time right now where insane people have gone at power in media and in government. And they are dictating to us state-sanctioned insanity. And we have to start calling it exactly what it is. I'm not gonna entertain your foolishness, man. You're a freaking nutcase. And you need to be put in a straight jacket. I'm not going to argue with you. When you engage a fool in an argument, you don't know who the fool is. You're the fool, you know. It tells a man can't argue with a fool. And that's what we've been doing. And I refuse to do it. It actually says that in Proverbs. It says that you can't convince someone. And these aren't the direct quotes, but this is in Proverbs. Read the first 10 passages in Proverbs. Um... It says that you cannot you can't convince someone who doesn't want to believe you. If they're a fool, if they're if they're if they're ignorant, you can't convince them of something because it doesn't matter how well you say it, it doesn't matter how thought out you your response is, it doesn't matter how many facts you present, it doesn't matter. If they don't want to believe you, if they don't have the capability to even process what you're saying, it's like talking to it's literally like talking to a, a kid, like a like a toddler, they don't even understand what you're saying. So why even try? It's no point. And that's basically where he's getting at. Um, 
in terms of certain topics, I agree with this, such as the premise that one race is automatically superior to the next. No, that I refuse to agree with that. I'm sorry. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. In terms of who started this, I haven't researched exactly if it was a 100% leftist or 100%. I don't know. What I do know is I don't agree with that premise. So we walk around saying, why do black people need DEI? Show you how stupid it is, okay? Show you how stupid DEI is. And I, told, I say this about affirmative action also. Okay, you say the government is racist. Yeah, government is racist. And businesses are racist. Yeah, they are, and we need DEI and affirmative action. I said, so you're going to give the racist government and the racist business the ability to go into the black community and choose the people that they want to elevate. Who do you think they're going to choose? Malcolm X or step and fetch it? What he said is a very good point. He argued that if you say that these institutions are bad, which a lot of people do say that these institutions are bad, how could you then go and say, but, you, but you, can y'all help us with this right here? That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Like, think about it in terms of real life. If you know someone doesn't like you or doesn't respect you, but then they turn around and ask you for something, are you going to do what's in their best interest? No, I'm not saying corporations are, are like that. I'm just saying what, what he said, it, make, it makes a lot of sense. It, it really does. Step and fetch it. They're going to choose the people that they want the people that they are comfortable with. And this is why after 50 years of affirmative action, we still at the bottom of everything. Why? Because they went and chose the black people they wanted. The people in the black caucus, bunch of Stephen Fetchets. What are they? I don't know who Stephen, I don't know who that is, if I'm being honest. So when he says that, I have no idea. And I'm not going to sit here and say the government is, is automatically bad. I don't agree with that. I don't think corporations are automatically bad either. I don't. I will say that if we've been doing this for 50 years, affirmative action or DEI, if we've been doing this for 50 years and we are if we are still at the bottom of things, obviously there's a problem within the African American culture that's holding us back. And it's not necessarily black skin because people will argue well, it is racism, but you have to think African Americans are not the only black people in the country. There are other people in a country who are not African-Americans who are black. However, we as a culture, African-Americans, we are still economically at the bottom and socioeconomically. We have the lowest marriage rates, the lowest amount of nuclear households, the lowest amounts of income, the lowest amount of college degrees. We have the lowest of almost any statistic that is positive. And if we've been doing this for 50 years, um, DEI, which predominantly helps the African-American community, because nowadays they don't just say, are you black or white? They ask, um, what's your nationality? They ask, where are you from? And they're not just asking this so they can have. No, they want to know, are you African-American or are you African or are you Brazilian? They want to know exactly what you are because they want to. It's like they're targeting the African-American community, but. We are still at the bottom. Nothing has is really improving, and that's a cultural issue. They do. Black schools are the worst schools in the history of the world. 85% of the people are not proficient in reading or math. You can bring in school choice. No! Why don't you want school choice? Because, well, they won't tell you this, the teachers' unions give 99% of their money to, to these guys, and these guys, what, then take care of the teachers' union, give them a monopoly. So, you got a war zone going on down in the ghettos. You want to let people arm themselves and defend themselves. No. Why? Well, man, if you arm yourself, you can't keep, you know, what's going to happen when we want to sell the dope on the street and let the illegals in? The people will defend themselves. So we can't do that. Well, the people are Christian and they're Muslim and they're Jewish. Why don't you let them pray their religion? No. Mm-mm. You brought, kick God out of the schools. Brought the drag queens in. Man, this is a deep video. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, whether or not you agree with Vince Ellison or not. Um, but I'm going to end this here. Let me know if you want a part two. And and if you have any information on this, let me know. Really, let me know. Um, this is LFR Jojo. I'll see you in the next